So the next section in reduction with grade 11 trig is looking at co-functions. It's sometimes also called co-ratios. And the interesting thing here is that if we calculate sine and cos of 30 and 60 degrees, over here we get the sine of 30 is a half, the cos of 60 is a half, and therefore we can see that the sine of 30 is equal to the cos of 60. And if we look at the cos of 30 on our calculator and the sine of 60 on our calculator, we find that they are also equal. And that brings us to a very important rule um, which works um, in a general case as well. And this is the general case. If, that, if we have the sine and the cos of two angles, they are equal to each other. But they're only equal to each other if the angles are complementary. Now, what does complementary mean? Remember from long ago geometry, complementary angles are angles which together equal 90 degrees. And a side supplementary, remember, is equal to 180. But if two angles together equal 90 degrees, they are called complementary angles. Now, over here, we notice that 50 and 40 are complementary because 50 plus 40 is 90 degrees. So they would be complementary angles. They complement of each other, the complements of each other. <clears throat> so in other words, the sine of 40 is equal to the cos of 40. Because the other interesting thing, remember, sine is actually short for sine and cos is short for cosine. And that would also indicate that they are co-ratios of each other. Cosine and sine. They are co-ratios or co-functions. So that means whenever we want to reduce sine of 80, not reduce in this case because that's already an acute angle, but if we've got the sine of 80, we can change it to its co-ratio, which is the cos of 10. The rule is that sine changes to cos or cos changes to sine. And the two angles need to be complementary angles. Now, to understand why this works, it's very interesting. It's not essential to know, and I'm not going to take too much time over it. But if we make 90 minus theta this angle in my right angle triangle, that would be 90. And then using angle sum of a triangle, that would then give you theta. If we look at this triangle on the left, the upper one, that would be 90, and this would become 90 minus theta. So it's almost as if the angles just swap places, um, but x, y, and r doesn't. So that's an interesting way of having a look at that. Um, and then that'll give you, that'll explain why it works. You don't need to know why, but that explains why it works. Then we move on to the rules here. So these are called your co-function rules. So if we have sine, it can change to cos. But in general, 90 minus theta changes to theta. What are they saying there? If I have the sine of, let's say, 90 minus 20 degrees, that is equal to the cos of 20 degrees. What is 90 minus? It's actually 70 there. So the sine of 70 is equal to the cos of 20 because these two angles together must equal 90 degrees because they are complementary. Or we could say that the cos of 90 minus theta becomes the sine of theta. What happens if we work in, in a different quadrant? So sine of 90 plus theta takes us to which quadrant? Takes us to the second quadrant, right? So in this case, the first thing we need to check from our reduction knowledge is that the sine of 90 plus theta, that's in the second quadrant, and sine there is positive. So that's why it remains positive. But because this is a co-ratio, we're going to change it to sine changes to cos. Similarly, if I have the cos of 90 plus theta, let's see which quadrant that takes us to. 90 plus theta takes us to this one. And in this quadrant, second quadrant, cos is negative. That's why this becomes negative. Cos in that angle is negative. And cos changes to sine. Now, 
The big difference, which is quite important, is the reduction formula, which we did yesterday and previously, is generally we always reduce in terms of the 180 degree line. So we always work like this. And we represented angles. That was theta is always acute. This is 180 minus theta. This angle was 180 plus, and this in the fourth quadrant was represented as 360 minus. And in this particular case here, we always reduced our angles back to the 180 line, to my horizontal line, to the x-axis. But whenever I deal with these co-ratios, it's in terms of this one here. So when we deal with the angle theta sitting there and this is 90 minus theta so we work in in terms of the in terms of the 90 degree line and because of this swap here where theta is there or there because of that swap we re work in terms of this 90 degree line now, it's very important to just remember that change. So whenever we're reducing 180 plus 180 minus, whenever we're reducing um, a larger angle to an acute angle, we always work in terms of the horizontal line. Whenever you spot a 90, whenever you spot a 90, immediately it must trigger, aha, I'm working in terms of this line here. And because I'm working in terms of this line here, it's going to change to its co-function. So now if we look at a few examples, I've just chosen two examples to look at. Now if we quickly scan this here, we'll notice there's a 90, so that's going to be a co-ratio. That's already acute. That's already acute. There's a co-ratio there. So if we answer sine of 90 minus theta, <coughs> there it is. Sine of 90 minus theta just becomes the cos of theta. And sine of theta is just sine of theta. Cos of theta we can just write down. Now let's check this one. It's a 90, so it's a co-ratio. We're going to use a co-ratio, so it changes to sine. Let's just see which quadrant though. Cos of 90 plus theta is in my second quadrant, so that has to become negative. Now that I've done my reduction, I can cancel, and I can happily cancel here. So my final answer is going to be minus 1. <laughs> Let's do one more. We'll do number B. So now the question we here would be to simplify. So we see a whole lot. Let's first spot by seeing our co-functions there because there's a 90 and there because there's a 90. The rest is just going to be my normal reduction, which I've already done from yesterday. So the first one, cos of 180 minus, is in this quadrant. And remember, cos is negative there. So that just becomes negative cos x. This is my co-ratio, so cos is going to change to sine of x. Now remember our negative angle goes clockwise, so it's going to be in the fourth quadrant. And tan is negative there. Then we move on to the denominator. 180 plus x is in my third quadrant. And sine is negative there. Then we move on to this last one, which is co-ratio. So immediately sine is going to change to cos because of that 90. And in the second, let's see which 90 is in that quadrant. And sine is positive in that, so it stays positive. So there we've done our reduction. First step. Now the rest is just a case of simplifying. So I'll start again with my signs. So minus divided by minus is a plus, and that leaves me with that one minus there. So my final answer is going to be negative. And because this is all one term, I can merely cancel. And that leaves me with negative tan x. And there's my answer. Oh, not tax. Ha <laughs> ha. Negative tan x. 
There we go, grade 11s. And now if you can go and do some practice examples, these ones here, and we'll put the memo up tomorrow.